I mean, what else is there to open with? But hallelujah. Let's get started. Hey everybody, I'm Andrew Fantasia. Welcome to Thumb Together. And today we're going to be talking about Zack Snyder's Justice League together. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and give some love to that subscribe button as well. Clearly, fans giving love to things has its benefits, as you can tell, because Zack Snyder's Justice League kind of exists. Wow, so it's here. It It's finally here and it's able to be watched. I never thought that we would see this day come. I mean, remember, it took, what, four decades or something to get the Richard Donner cut of Superman 2? Like, and that was pulling teeth. So the fact that we're sitting here and we're talking about the real Justice League movie as it was, you know, intended to be just makes my heart so happy. And to top it all off, after this four-hour romp was over, I sat back and I thought to myself, that is a superhero movie, but also not. Here's what I mean by that. In this world of comic book-based tentpole motion pictures, we tend to muddy the waters and we sort of create a standard in our brain and expect everything to adhere to it, but that's not the case and it shouldn't be. One action movie shouldn't be like the other, one rom-com shouldn't be like the other, so why should one superhero movie be like the other. And I think that this misguided mentality pervaded the minds of a lot of the higher-ups at WB back in 2017, which is what led to the Justice League uh, theatrical version of this that was just meh. Marvel is making big, colorful action comedies with a lot of heart, and they're doing a tremendous job of it. They've nailed that down to a science, and it's terrific. We love them. DC, at least Zack Snyder's first couple DC movies were trying to be something different. They weren't trying to take what Marvel did and be like, let's just do that with The Flash. No, they were trying to make something along a more melancholy line. And I don't even know if that's the right word for it. It was just, instead of making colorful action comedies, DC wanted to tell these comic booky stories in the veins of an epic myth. Like as if you were reading the Bible or reading an old giant tome of Greek and Roman and Norse myths, or you're just wandering through an ancient cathedral and you're just trying to piece together a story based on what you see printed on the stained glass windows. That is the tone that Zack Snyder was going for for his DC universe. And he was doing pretty well. Man of Steel, awesome. Batman v Superman, the cut Snyder wanted to make, the three hour cut. Awesome. And then Justice League came around. Not so awesome. Because Snyder wasn't allowed to make his movie. But I'm not going to go in depth into that here because I already made a video about it, which you can watch at the link in the description below, where I talk all about what the deal is with the Justice League. But I'm here today to just give my review of Zack Snyder's Justice League of this four hour and I believe three minute movie that hit the airwaves yesterday. What do I think? Also, are there still airwaves? Is that still a thing? I'm kind of old. My brain is still stuck in the 1970s. Does coffee still come in those wood paneled vending machines or what? My verdict is that Zack Snyder's Justice League is beautiful. As a DC fan, as a Justice League fan, as a movie fan, this is everything I wanted. And what boggles my mind is that it's not even a wholly different movie than the movie that the studio squirted out for us three years ago. It's the same plot, it's the same beats, but it takes its care and it takes its time and it moves everything in different positions with sort of different speeds at different moments and it's juggling a lot of balls in the air and it's doing it beautifully. And I'm probably gonna say that word beautiful a lot throughout this video because that really was the feeling this movie left me walking away with. This is going to sound like a bold statement coming from a guy who loved Infinity War and Endgame to pieces with all his heart, but Zack Snyder's Justice League, you know what, I'm just going to call it Justice League because this is the real version of the Justice League movie and it's faster to say. Justice League might be the most beautifully emotional superhero movie I have ever watched. And there's a bunch of factors that contribute to that. There's all of the stuff in the story, of course, but then it's paired like wine with a fine Havarti with all of this stuff that's been going on out here in the real world. It's so cathartic on a whole bunch of levels. 
In the real world, you had this guy, Joss Whedon, who's bitter about the way his second Avengers movie was handled, who comes over here and picks up the slack on this movie, but doesn't really do it any kind of justice. <laughs> and now word is coming out that he is not a pleasant human being to work with at all. On top of that, you've got Ray Fisher, who plays Cyborg, who has been fighting this battle against Joss Whedon and against Warner Brothers and against the higher-ups there who have made his life working on this movie so unpleasant that he doesn't even want to come back for any more movies. and doesn't even look like WB wants him back. That bridge has been burned and it's just been this awful experience for this young man who is super talented and, in my opinion, the best character in this movie. Cyborg was the best character actually in both versions in the first version he was so fascinating and i just wanted more ray fisher killed it as cyborg and in here we get to see exactly how much he killed it because they left so much of him on the cutting room floor this is cyborg's movie he plays this character who is a hard character to play flawlessly there is no other way to play cyborg and I'm telling you that as a writer, as an actor, and as a guy who reads these comics every once in a while, there is no other way to play the character of Cyborg than what this guy did. He crushed it. So that's very cathartic. There's catharsis for me, just as a crazy little DC fan who has been growing up collecting trading cards of these guys with my dad since 1991. And all of a sudden, who appears on my screen but Darkseid, finally? A live action dark side in a movie for the first time in history and he's not the only new god we get Steppenwolf is back and he looks better than he ever did and we get to see Desaad and there's even grainy goodness grainy goodness is there but she doesn't say anything but it's okay she exists Zack Snyder put her in the movie the fact that I just saw a movie that had dark side and Desaad in it what <laughs> And last but not least, and in fact, I'm going to just go ahead and say last but most, because to me, I think this is the most important, is that this film exists so cathartically for Zack and Deborah Snyder. It is dedicated, as we see at the end, to Zack's daughter, Autumn, who passed away back in May 2017 when this movie was rolling through production, which is why he stepped away from it to begin with, and which is why we ended up with the Justice League cut, which was meh. So the fact that he has been living for years with this terrible tragedy that happened to him, also knowing that because of it, this piece of art that he was so invested in was taken away from him and turned into something completely not what he wanted it to be. The fact that he gets to finally sit down and make this movie and show it to people and say, this is what I had in mind. And on top of all that, he gets to kind of do it as a little bit of a screw you to Whedon and Warner Brothers for what they did to his vision and the cherry on top of it all is he gets to do it for Autumn. Essentially this is what dad was working on when you passed away. I'm going to finish it for you. This is my grand unfinished symphony and I'm not going to leave it that way. That is beautiful. This is a Hollywood story. The making of this movie itself is arguably more Hollywood than the movie than Batman fighting demons. And even though I joked earlier how it's just faster to call it Justice League, it really truly is a perfect title, Zack Snyder's Justice League. That really is perfect because it is such a personal movie. It's his movie, it's his vision, it's for his daughter. The end credits having the song Hallelujah play, which was sung by a family friend because it was Autumn's favorite song, which they also sang at her funeral. This movie almost feels like we're watching the home movies of this family that's how personal it is to the Snyders and at the same time it's this story of these mythic gods that so many people have grown up with and he's finally doing them justice hey <laughs> in conclusion because I, I could rant about this for hours I straight up love Zack Snyder's Justice League the whole idea of big bad stuffy suits at movie studios letting money get in the way of art it's been a problem since movies first existed I think from this point on though moving forward forward, we can take Zack Snyder's Justice League and kind of hold that up as an emblem of exactly why art is more important than money. This is exactly why. This personifies it in a way that I can't even articulate right now because my brain is still vibrating from the fact that I saw grainy goodness. 
So even though this ends on a massive cliffhanger, even though the nightmare future that we saw in BVS was elaborated on in a very interesting way, even though we were promised Deathstroke and Martian Manhunter and probably some Green Lanterns in our near future, we probably won't ever see Justice League 2 and 3. It's not something I'm holding my breath for, but as this proves, anything is possible if enough people want it to be. So that was Zack Snyder's Justice League in my opinion, one of the most beautiful superhero movies ever made. This has been Thumb Together. I have been Andrew Fantasia. You have been devilishly good looking. Tell me your secrets, please. I'll see you here next time on Thumb Together. And until then, adios. (laughs) 